What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Alright, this story's called Revenge of the Construction Workers. I am a teacher, and when I was younger, I would take summer jobs to supplement my income. One summer, I worked for a bricklayer named Jerry and heard an amazing story. I worked for Jerry in the mid-90s, so the story either happened in the early 90s or in the 80s. Here goes. The setting for the story was a community of small rural towns which had only o which had uh, only one on God, wow, that threw me off had only one brick contractor. Jerry began his career as a bricklayer working for this contractor, a real jerk. Jerk and jerk's son, jerk's son, adult working the business with his father, would harass, belittle, and humiliate all their employees on a regular basis. No work was ever good enough and employees were told they weren't worth what they were paid. Not only did jerk mistreat his employees, but he was equally rude to other subcontractors and to the general contractors who hired him. Since he was the only bricklayer in the community, there was nothing anyone could do about it. Needless to say, the turnover rate for the brick business was very high. The only person that stuck with Jerk and Company was Jerry. Jerry told me that his father had instilled a self-confidence in him that Jerry could do anything he set his mind to and that he should not evaluate himself according to what others said, but rather by the facts. Although Jerry was belittled by Jerk and Son, as were all other employees, Jerry was becoming a very good bricklayer. Jerry knew he was good. Jerk knew Jerry was good. But Jerk didn't know that Jerry knew that he was good. <laughs> Not only was Jerry a good bricklayer, he was very respectful to the boss who disrespected him. Jerk thought that Jerry was a naive pushover who was buying his head games. This would prove to be a huge mistake on his part. This reads like a children's book. <laughs> Yeesh, I need some nasal spray. One day, Jerry was doing an exceptionally good job of laying brick. Not only was his craftsmanship amazing, he was laying brick at a high rate of speed so that he was making his boss lots of money. Of course, Jerk and Son were belittling his work as though he was doing the very opposite. This scenario was being observed by the general contractor of the project. After work that day, the general contractor asked Jerry to stay behind so he could talk to him, as did every other construction worker in the community. General contractor hated working with Jerk. General contractor told Jerry that he had heard Jerk and son belittling him and told him that he disagreed with everything Jerk was saying. He asked Jerry if he had ever considered going into business for himself. Jerry said that he would like to do that someday. General contractor then said that he would loan Jerry the money to buy a mixer, the most expensive piece of equipment needed to start a brick business, if Jerry would indeed start said business. The only hitch was that Jerry would need to pay for the mixer whenever he could and that he would subcontract under general contractor. Jerry agreed to those terms and prepared to begin his new venture. Jerry respectfully told Jerk and Son his plans and gave his notice. The two mocked Jerry ruthlessly and laughed him to scorn. Jerk told Jerry, You'll be back in two months begging to return to your job. You'll never make it as a subcontractor. Two months later, rather than collapsing as Jerk predicted, Jerry was still in business and going strong. What? Go Jerry, man. Why? One year later, Jerry's business was booming and a drunk Jerk showed up at Jerry's house and begged him to come back to work with Jerk and Son. <laughs> Jerry, you're the best employee I ever had. Jerry replied, Why didn't you ever tell me that when I was working for you? Jerk couldn't answer the question, and Jerry obviously didn't accept the offer for employment. Two years after beginning his entrepreneurial adventure, Jerry heard that Jerk and Son went out of business. 
Jerry said that he never intended to harm Jerk and Son when he accepted General Contractor's offer. He said that looking back on things, he realized that he had become Jerk's greatest nightmare. I can't say that General Contractor intended no harm. I thought the most amazing thing about the story was how that Jerry maintained his self-esteem in spite of all the ridicule. I also gained a respect for Jerry's father who instilled an unshakable self-confidence in Jerry. Or in Jerry, sorry. Edits, I contacted Jerry today after 20 years to let him know how highly you thought of him. He reminded me that his father was wheelchair bound and accomplished so much in spite of his handicap. It was his father's overcoming huge obstacles that made Jerk's words seem to be such a minor obstacle to overcome. What a beautiful story. <laughs> I love how this reads, man. It seems like, um, like, um... A story, like a children's story that you'd see kind of like in a TV show, like within like an adult TV show, like kind of as a parody. And then I don't know. It's it's it was fun. <laughs> I, like, I loved how this was written um, and also really charming story. I appreciate it. All right. This story's called he should have just said his part. Some background. I'm the manager of a tight-knit extracurricular activity business. My boss is the owner. We serve children and adults. Oh, I, I'm glad to see at least they're not discriminating. <laughs> you know, some people like to eat kids, some people like to eat old people. You, you know, you got something for everybody. Or should I say someone for everybody? <laughs> Uh, anyway, we run on a membership-based system. More background. Mom brings in her four boys two years ago. Four boys two years ago, our founding fa- sorry, uh, to attend with us. Mom and dad split last year. Oh no. Count ordered custody- uh, court ordered custody agreement says he pays 90% and she pays 10% for all extracurriculars based on their income. Oh wow, let's hope mom gets a better job and let's hope dad's job stays good, cause yeesh. Um, anyway, uh, what? I'll try to keep this short. <laughs> After mom and dad split, crap hit the fan for these people. I really wish I could have said the S word because uh, you guys know I love assonance. We have several divorced parents working to get their kids here when they can. But dad just never seems to want to. Since we operate with memberships kind of like a gym, if you don't come in, you're wasting your money. Every Friday, I call our people who've been absent for more than four days. Every other week, they're out completely. I look into it a bit further with mom who attended with us before her kids started, and those are the weeks dad has them. This has happened before, and it's an easy enough fix. We take the parent who isn't cooperating through our program and help them understand the benefits Benefits their kids are getting out of it. He watched them a few times when they would come and started to see how they enjoyed it and the value of the program. In the program, crisis averted. He's bringing the kids again. Since the divorce, dad hasn't been super forthcoming with money. And with mom being the primary and not having the funds due to the ongoing divorce proceedings, my boss forfeited 11 months of payments for these people totaling $3,060. My boss put her foot down to weeks ago right before the one year mark for them. We couldn't keep not letting them pay us. Mom comes in, we give her the business, she's cool about it, understands that we have a business to run, sets up her court order 10% on a typical payment plan that we do, $408 over a 12 month period. We email dad because at this point he's just giving them to mom to take here nearly every day. We don't typically invoice people, we usually just set it up in house with them in front of us, so having to write out that he owes us $3,672 over the next year was tough. Dad doesn't check his email. Cool, fine, whatever. This morning I call because first payments are due this week. I gave him the business. His reply was, yeah, I saw the email. I can't pay anything until the court orders extracurriculars because the child support is way too high, but I really like the program y'all have. Okay, I just think to myself, right. We have the court documents that say how much he had to spend on us. 
That's cool. I type up the call transcript and send it back to him and CC mom with a note that my boss would be calling to set up payments this week. Mom texts me immediately, calling his beaver sausage because he hasn't paid her for giving self a he hasn't paid her for giving self a cent of child support ordered six months ago. Same document she provided us. Then, Dad replies. The first reply he sent to any email we've sent him. He wanted to make sure we knew, Continue if the child support schedule is complete and there is money to put to it. Possibly is. Mom, pays her half is out the conversation. I didn't quite understand what this meant. Me neither. But I interpreted it as, The child support schedule isn't set yet, so I won't pay until Mom pays. But we'd sent him the invoice showing him that Mom paid. After a while, I stopped trying to understand. It just wasn't worth it. I sent the invoice to both their lawyers listed on the court document and let them take it to court. Dad refused to pay, even after he was found in contempt of court for refusing to pay for the kids' extracurricular activities. I've genuinely never met anyone this stubborn. The revenge starts here. So we end up having to take Dad to court because he ended up signing a contract with us to pay and he's refused again and again. Our non-payments clause allows us to request payment in full if you have too many problems with the payments. The full amount listed on the contract he signed was $4,080 minus the mom's portion. So, my boss, the lovely one she is, decided we can and would request payment in full, but not just his portion, the entire $4,080. My boss also pulled out the $3,060 that we waived, and the judge made him pay it too. And the TLDR, we don't usually read those, but just, you know, to summarize it, to tie it all together, kinda. Dad doesn't want to pay $3,672, so he ends up paying paying 7140 Yikes. Damn. Okay, well, yeah, let's hope he has a good job, <laughs> otherwise that's gonna hurt. It kinda sucks that, um, you know, some people kind of give up responsibility over their children after they and their spouses go split skis. You know what I'm saying? You still got kids. In fact, why don't you just pretend you love each other? forever and then maybe eventually you do i'm kidding <laughs> don't do that if you're miserable obviously but you still got kids and that's my lecture for you guys today you guys probably didn't know anything i just told you but now you do you're welcome <laughs> you can now divorce your wife or husband <laughs> this story's called too lazy to do your jobs well then take care of the boxes a bit of backstory this was during my time i was working in retail every day my department would get pallets of merchandise that needed to be stocked usually after my coworkers and i would leave for the day just before closing i would work closing one week opening shift the following week weekends off during that time we would have several groups of overnight coworkers assigned to different departments to stock merchandise brought up in delivery trucks and then put any overstock in the back clean up the cardboard boxes. The opening shift would take care of any overstock pallets the overnights didn't have time to get to. Every week, each group of overnight employees would be rotated to different departments. Unfortunately, there was one group of overnight employees that had a bit of a reputation for being lazy, and those guys were assigned to my department for the week. At the time when this happened, I was working my opening shift, years before Brovid. The wrongs being done during the week wasn't so much being done to just me. It was being done to my other co-workers in my entire department. So this was pretty much a group effort. On with the story. My co-workers and I get to our department to find four pallets of merchandise, saran wrapped, labeled as overstock. We double check the pallets and shelves and find out that it needed to be worked. We were pissed. By that time, the department manager and supervisor found out, and they were absolutely livid. So, we ended up working the merchandise, putting them on the shelves. I was getting ready to start breaking down the boxes when I get this wicked idea. My idea was to stack all of the empty boxes like they were full, wrap them up, and then label them as overstock. But I wanted to get the approval from my supervisor first. When I talked to my supervisor, I mentioned what I wanted to do. My supervisor chuckled at the idea, approved it, and explained what had happened to him just last year.
year. Apparently a year before, the overnight employees played a prank on him on April 1st, as they had left two pallets of merchandise wrapped up and labeled as overstock. He said he double-checked, only to find that all of the boxes on the pallets were empty. Ah, sounds familiar. <laughs> he gathered all of us in the department, explained what we were doing, and we got to work. The supervisor explained that if it should happen again, we should inform him. Work the merchandise, restock the empty boxes as if they were full, wrap them, label them as overstock, and then leave the pallets for the overnighters. Unfortunately, my opening co-workers and I were done for the day. We were at two pallets. Fortunately, our closing co-workers were there. When, or I guess then, the supervisor explained what he wanted done. The next day, we walk in, more pallets of overstock merchandise. Supervisor was informed, basically rinse and repeat for the rest of the week. The last day of the week, however, we walk in. To our surprise, there was only one pallet. It had seven pallets stacked on top of it, with a handwritten, go love yourselves, labeled on it. We informed the supervisor. He informed us that the overnight group assigned to our department were terminated by the store manager. A prank war that ends in like a mass firing? Yikes! I was like about to say, man, I love this back and forth. I hope it doesn't go wrong. And guess what, guys? It did. I should have shut my brain up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.